So assuming that you are in a situation where you have a product or a brand that is established and you know what you're doing and what where, where you want to go with it and you're thinking to yourself, fine, I'm ready to go to market and I want to um, you know, sell some of this product. What is it that you need to do to make sure that that works? So um, I'm a key, uh, a key fan of planning. I think you always need to plan. I plan for planning. I, I plan all the time. And I think that's a really important thing to do in this case. Um, you know, if you, if you just, um, as an entrepreneur, a lot of us just like to go and do things. There's nothing wrong with just doing, but unless it is done as part of a plan of doing, it's very difficult to look at it and go, okay, that's worked, that hasn't worked. What can I deduce from it? What can I learn? So a plan to start with is really, really key. Um, you have to accept that there's an experiment. I always tell clients that it doesn't matter how good our plan is until we actually start calling. We're not going to know what's going to happen and things really change. So you've got to be prepared to, for, to change things, to troubleshoot, to really measure where you where what you're doing works and where it doesn't. Things take time, particularly B2B, but I would imagine B2C isn't, you know, there's no quick win um, necessarily with marketing and sales. It's always something to look at over time. So you need to be, be, be realistic what budget you put aside to it and how long. Don't give up after two days of calling, go, no one likes me. I'm going to go and become a monk. Don't do that. You know, keep going and make sure you have resources in place in case you are very successful and you have sold some and you're not in that situation where you suddenly go, oh, oh, OK. So people are actually interested, but I've got no one to talk to them. So all of these things are really important for your your um, your, your thinking process. Um, and in, if you are going to then create a strategy to help your help you go to market, these are the areas that you must cover in that. So the first one is what's the key goal? What are you trying to achieve out of this campaign? That doesn't have to be financial, by the way, but a financial goal does help. Um, what are your key opportunities that you've got in the market currently? Um, who are you targeting and what can you learn from the competition? Um, lots of people forget about the competition or don't think it's important or think for some reason that they should ignore the competition. But actually, um, you can learn a lot from your competition. Good stuff, bad stuff, but it's, it's important to have a look and see what they're doing. Um, so a bit more details about each of those areas. Um, so in terms of, of goal, as I mentioned, it doesn't have to be a financial goal alone, um, but it, it can be. It, I think it's really important to, to, uh, to decide what it is that you're actually trying to get out of the campaign. Is it creating awareness? Is it just finding out a bit more about how your product is accepted in the market? Is it identifying who the main people are that you need to talk to and what they think? Is it getting feedback? Is it making sales and achieving a, a revenue target? It really varies. And, you know, when we work with clients, that is something that I really do spend time with them to understand because it's not always about revenue targets and there's nothing wrong with that, but it does help. For measurement reasons, particularly, it does help to break it down and say, OK, you know, what am I trying? Where, where, how better off am I going to be um, after this campaign if it works? And then what does that mean in terms of sales? So, you know, what's an average contract to you? Um, what's your conversion rate? So how many people do you need to talk to in order to sell, um, to sell a product or a contract or, um, or a service? And you know, what does that mean? Therefore, we'll work it backwards. You know, if I need to speak to five people, how many do I need to call to be able to speak to five people? Um, how many do I need to appoint in order to to um, to actually make a sale? So all of these um, measurements are really important. It can be a bit complicated, but nothing you can't solve with a bit of Google's help in terms of sort of looking at what are the key measurements? How do you set up KPIs or, or indeed you can approach um, a company that can help you with that. Um, key opportunities. So what's your key USP in, in your, in your um, business? So um, unique selling proposition in your business. It doesn't have to be one. You can have lots and they don't need to be unique. It is called unique, but it doesn't have to be unique. Other people can be offering that indeed. It's not, um, it's not like you are the only one offering it. Um, but really key um, to think about your culture, um, your approach, what makes you stand out to competition? What makes you different? 
Um, and, uh, you know, and that is a really important thing to think about um, because often when we start a campaign, it's our baby and we love it and we think, well, it's so beautiful. But other people have seen it before. The fact that you've decided to join the carousel and go out there selling your product doesn't mean that everybody's going to go, oh, that's amazing. Thank you. You know, it, you, you, you do need to think about the fact that you will need to convince people to come and listen and be interested um, is there any market condition in your industry at the moment that means your product, your USP, your ability, your knowledge really help people at the moment? If there is one, that is fantastic because it's really, really helpful when you approach people to say, you know how the cost of living has gone up so much. Well, guess guess what? I can provide a relief to that or whatever it is that um, you can look at um, and, and, and always think about your hook. So just telling people that you'll give them three minutes free consultation isn't enough because a lot of people are saying that it's thinking a bit outside the box. How can you make them feel comfortable? How can you get their interest? If you're going out on an outreach, they haven't asked you to call them. You're calling them out of the blue, you know, depending on how much marketing you do, of course. But even if you do marketing and they have seen the name before, they haven't asked for the call necessarily. So you have got to think about that. If you're doing inbound calls, again, you know, people may have researched, but they might not be ready to buy. So for them, the hook might be different. So it's it's thinking really about what you're offering to them and the process um, that you're going to take them through. Um, in terms of target market, that's an obvious one, which obviously I would imagine a lot of, a lot of you here in the room have, have heard about and thought about. Um, you know, what sectors, what demographics are you targeting? But with, but also within that, who do you want to talk to? So particularly within B2B, if you're calling companies, who, who's the decision maker that, you know, that you want to target? Because just calling and asking to speak to the MD or the FD or the HR manager is not good enough. You need to do some research beforehand to show you're serious, to show the companies you really do want to work with them and you're not just calling a thousand companies trying to, you know, fish. Um, and, you know, what's the key issue you are solving for them? So what's their problem that you are solving? Um, the amount of people I ask that question of and they haven't got a clue what I mean and what I'm talking about it is, is pretty surprising to me. Um, because because you've got to know your target market inside out before you go out there. You've got to do some research and look at you know what problems have they got, how does that relate to you and your product? Um, why would they want to talk to you? So the thing is, people that people get targeted so much. There's so much out there. There's so much communication out there and so much noise. It's really hard to make that particular noise that make them stand and listen to you and the more research you can do the more thinking you can do in advance the more success you will have because just sending out to the general stuff to general people there's there's far too much of it out there um and also why should they choose you i mean it depends on the industry you're working maybe you've got a product that's very unique in which case obviously if it solves a particular problem and you're calling the right people that makes your life a bit easier but a lot of us work within industries that are very competitive. There are lots of competition around other people who do the same. How do you differentiate yourself? How, what, what message should you put in front of these people when you talk to them that makes them go, yeah, OK, I want to work with you? Um, again, not, not necessarily easy to do, but really, really important. So it's not just, oh, I want to speak to, you know, to um, IT companies or or accountants or whatever it's it's a lot more than that if you really want to succeed because the devil is in the detail my friends <laughs> um competition so um they can really help um you to avoid mistakes or fast track things um you could look at what what they already do in terms of their marketing who did they seem to target um what do they offer them is there any sort of specific sort of um hooks that they're putting out that you're going okay that's interesting could i do something similar what's their route to market what what are they choosing are they using um you know what tools are they using linkedin emails um you know have they got a lot of sales people um you know what is it that they that they are using as their route to market or routes to market um and then the, and, and really importantly you know, is there stuff they're doing you want to adopt? Is there stuff they're doing you hate? 
Um, and you can see maybe people's responses to stuff they put out there. There's, there's, you know, it could really help with um, avoiding pitfalls and falling into places you don't want to go into. So, you know, I, th- I think that looking at your competition and, and, and really understanding what they're doing is, is really, really key, um, you know, when, when, when planning a campaign. Um, so that those are the, the main things that I think you need to look at when you look, when you plan your strategy to go out to campaign. Um, and, you know, and, and, and a lot of them you can do on, on your own and do a lot of research yourself. In, in fact, no one can teach you um, better about your company. So no, no other no other external factor will know better than you. You know best. Um, so a lot of it is stuff that you can do, you can research. But the, the point is, is to really try and, and look at it strategically as opposed to just going out there. I, I, I call it people who are trying to prove that marketing and sales just is, doesn't work for you. So just being able to go out there, try something, go, oh, I failed again. It doesn't work. I can't sell or or it never works or, or whatever. There, there seem to be people who, who do a lot of that just to, to sort of prove to themselves something else doesn't work. Well, it can work and it works well, but it does it does it, it does take a lot of focus in terms of um, you know d- different um, different details and different elements that you do need to consider beforehand. And I'm not saying you should procrastinate in your office for for six months before you dare set a foot out and go networking. But I do suggest that you do some, that you've got a, a clear strategy and that you've thought through things before you you start your campaign it will save you a lot of time and a lot of heartache however there is um there is a, a, a sometimes an issue um with people who want to go to market so again i mentioned entrepreneurs who just want to do 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 and want to go out there and sell and really are impatient to sort of get these results and get some magic dust sprinkled and for them to for them to move forward really quickly but I think that um, I do come across companies and, and, and entrepreneurs who come to us a bit too soon. So they want to go to market. They want to go in front of these people that they want to talk to. Um, but actually, their brand's not necessarily established. Their proposition isn't clear. Um, so when we talk to, to these people who who talk to a lot of other people and get targeted by lots of other companies, they just overlook it. And they they really aren't ready to to talk to you, and we we cannot get the results. Um, you've got to take into account that that people when you call them, you know, when you when you do an outreach in particular. So you know, if, if you're calling somebody or or trying to create awareness to your product with people that have not necessarily heard of your brand or your name, um, they they are the first thing they're doing is looking for reasons to tell you to go away, because they are really busy. And actually, if you've got a point, they actually don't like it very much because they have to do something about it. They have to listen. They have to have a meeting. And, and that is, you know, is is work for them, extra work. So often they are in that position when they just go, OK, quickly. I've never heard of them. I don't understand a proposition. I don't want to talk to them. I'm not interested. So they'll tell you they're not interested or they'll send you, you know, fob you off. So you want to make sure that when you do that outreach, you get as little as possible of that fob off. You'll always get a certain amount of it. Um, but if, if, you know, if, you, if your brand isn't presented properly, if your proposition isn't clear, you're not ready to go to market. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. <laughs>